So we're here today, today to celebrate peace and to celebrate peacemakers. Uh, and each of you are a peacemaker. And each of you has a role to play in making sure that our world is secure for our children and our grandchildren. Uh, Johnny's comments are so, uh, so poignant. Um, I want to acknowledge each of you, but I also want to acknowledge each of our city uh, council members, starting with Mayor Johnston and Bill Wyrick and Sousa and Todd and Bill Blatz. Uh, when I first presented a nuclear-free zone resolution to the city of Ojai, it, some people, it was hard to make the connection. Well, what does that have to do with us, and what are we doing things? Uh, but the reality has a lot to do with it. Um, we live in very dangerous times. Uh, the blessing that we have to be here together a few moments is actually largely out of sheer luck. Luck that by some accident, some cyber attack, some intention, our planet is not vaporized. Uh, there exist today 14,400 nuclear weapons on this planet, uh, about 92% uh, contained by the United States and Russia. Uh, this is an insanity that I spent my entire adult life and medical career uh, trying to eliminate. Uh, I actually call it my prescription for survival. Uh, We've, we've worked with scientific and climate scientists around the planet over the last decade and identified that nuclear weapons, which we all can imagine are so terrible, we've all seen the nuclear flashes, the explosions, the devastation at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, well the reality is they are far, far more dangerous than we ever realized. And working with the leading climate scientists on the planet, we've been able to identify that if a small, quote unquote, limited exchange, nuclear exchange, were to happen over there, and over there in this case would be between India and Pakistan, one of the most uh, anxious spots on the planet, they're always in some sort of a war and going to war footing over the Kashmir border between them, and they both are nuclear armed nations with a hundred weapons each the size of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, tiny weapons by today's standards, 100 weapons each. And in their military doctrines, the use of nuclear weapons is very low. If they feel threatened, they have nothing holding them back from using those nuclear weapons. Well, if they were to use 50 each, or 100 weapons total, Hiroshima size, we've now identified, first of all, it would kill 26 million people instantly in South Asia, okay? 20 million, that's horrendous. It would cause tremendous radiation risk and lots of issues there, which again, are non-survivable. But more significantly, what we now recognize is that would release so much black soot into the upper atmosphere that within a period of days, this entire planet, including Ojai, would be surrounded by this blackening that would drop temperatures far greater than all the global warming we've seen since the Industrial Revolution. And what that would do, that would dramatically reduce or possibly eliminate much of the growing seasons across our great world. Central United States, Eurasia, South America, and actually, we now have highly verifiable scientific data that shows ultimately in excess of two billion people would perish using 100 weapons of the 14,400. Or to put that in perspective, that's less than one half of 1% on the planet. And the United States, and in California in particular, one in five people in California is food insecure. They live on bare subsistence and all of a sudden, there would be no excesses. And everybody who is food insecure across this planet would actually be at risk of dying from starvation, what we call nuclear famine. So two billion people. This is an insanity that we, my generation, and many of you have allowed to happen, and something we have to re reverse and eliminate for future generations. So with that information, the non-nuclear nations of the world got together a year ago and came up with what's called the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. A treaty to ban nuclear weapons just as every other weapon of mass destruction has been previously banned. Chemical weapons, biologic weapons, landmines, all banned. But the deadliest nuclear has never been until summer of last year, 2017. At that time, 122 nations adopted the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons at the United Nations. That treaty then opened for signature on last year's International Day of Peace. 
And the way international treaties work is when 50 nations have signed them, 50 nations, they now become international law. And any nation that maintains, in this case, nuclear weapons, is in breach of international law. Now, that doesn't mean those weapons will be gone. It means, though, the United States and the other eight nuclear nations will now be in breach of international law. And from an interesting standpoint, I also work with an organization called the Committee to, I'm sorry, Don't Bank on the Bomb. And just like apartheid in South Africa, what finally brought the end to apartheid was when banks and financial institutions were now boycotted because they supported apartheid. There is now an international effort that says, if you are involved with nuclear weapons, you may not do business across the planet. And just for reference sake, the three biggest banks in our country that fund nuclear weapons by tens of billions of dollars are Bank of America, Chase Manhattan Bank, and Wells Fargo. They will be precluded from doing international business when this treaty finally comes to pass next year. So as I stand with you today, there are 15 nations who have actually adopted and ratified the treaty. There are 60 who have already signed, but just like our country, it has to go to their senates and their parliaments. And those will have signed by next year. That's going to put a lot of pressure if on, the, on the financial institutions, the manufacturers, the security people who deal with nuclear weapons. So when we came to Ojai and said, okay, what about this nuclear free zone on nuclear weapons? We actually support it. Again, I'm going to take a step back. The nine nations who have nuclear weapons, each of our nations boycotted the treaty. We said, no, 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 we, we're not going to do that. Well, interesting enough, we're mandated by international law, what's called the, <clears throat> the, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, to work in good faith to abolish these weapons. But we've decided we have a better idea. Well, because of that, the grassroots of each of the nine nations has developed a grassroots project to force our governments to get ready and to negotiate to abolish these weapons. So in the United States, we, we formed a group one year ago. It was the International Federation of Scientists, the American Academy of Scientists, the, the, uh, the Unitarian Church, many of the church groups across this country. It's called Back from the Brink. Remember, Back from the Brink. And if you go online, preventnuclearwar.org, every one of you can endorse that. Well, as part of our OHI resolution, we endorsed all the principles. We we're the first city in the nation, and now there are 14 cities. Yeah. Briefly, I want to say, what those cities have said is, number one, they want to re renounce the option of using nuclear weapons first, okay? We will attack before ever attack. That's always been the antithesis of our, our, of our nuclear doctrine. Number two, it renounces the ability of this president and any president from being able to launch nuclear war without congressional consent. It strips them. It also removes our, our missiles and our, our weapons from hair trigger, the, the fact that they have to be announced, uh, shot and uh, released before you know, any confirmation, so hair trigger. The fourth thing is to renounce the planned rebuilding of our entire nuclear arsenal at a cost of $1.7 trillion over the next 30 years that we will pass on to each and every one of your children and grandchildren. And finally, to work with all the nuclear nations to come around for the verifiable abolition of these weapons. Because only by abolishing these nuclear weapons will we be secure. And so OHI started that, and part of our intent was that we want to lead an effort, we want to have a domino effect. I want to say, to say there's now 14 cities, including the city of Baltimore, Los Angeles does, did it unanimously after the city of Los Angeles. Our own uh, state assembly person, Monique Limon, had the courage she heard and took it to the state and actually passed the state assembly and the state senate. California as a state is now on record supporting the back from the brink resolution. We're the, yes, it's remarkable. It has gained international attention, okay? They say California will lead, and who started it but OHA. And the interesting thing is California is the largest state in the nation, and we are the sixth largest economy in the world. So that is huge, and we can all take pride in that. So again, I invite you all to please go on preventnuclearwar.org, sign on as individuals. We now have hundreds of organizations. Santa Barbara is going to follow us in the next couple of weeks. I'll be speaking at their city council. So again, I'm glad Ojai led the way for our neighbor to the west. 
uh, again. But again, I want to thank each of you. I invite you to join us. This is something, with this information, you can't ignore it. You can't say, well, that's something you must be involved. Because silence implies consent. And as Johnny said earlier, again, when effectively, when the people lead, the, the leaders will follow. So please join us. Thank you.